I'm on the ground. I'm gonna get in the middle. Live on Facebook, live on Facebook. All right, someday I'll get that timing down. All right, guys, we're live on Facebook and the YouTube. Do we have any messages for Facebook today, or are they doing good? <laughs> a lot of times it's like Facebook, if it starts to die, go on to YouTube. Anyways, uh, welcome to Onset. I'm Daniel Norton. Uh, if you don't know, we stream on Facebook and YouTube. You now just realize that uh, if you're sitting here in the audience. Um, we are going to talk about uh, flash photography today. This is the intro to flash. So. I feel very college when I do that. Should I call it like 101 or something? Intro to Flash 101. Next week, we're doing advanced Flash. So if somehow you're being lazy, so you're not hearing this, and you didn't come to this one, you show up at advanced Flash next week with simple questions, I'm going to be like, you should have went back in time and watched that video. But today is the day you can ask whatever question you want, and I will only make fun of you a little bit. Um, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to talk about why you might use Flash, some of the advantages, some of the basics of it. We are going to... Uh, Make some pictures, of course, that's always more fun. So I have Allison here, Hello. and she's going to be our model. Uh, and then she has a dinner to go to. Yes. So, yeah. And so, you know, a lot of information there. Seth's over here on the Mighty Mix. <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants to come, Allie's looking for a date. Well, not really a date, but like a friend date. Uh, a freight. A freight. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, so when, whenever people ask me, they say, Daniel, that's my name, uh, you know, what kind of lighting should I get? If you're going to end up being a stills photographer only, primarily, uh, I always say ultimately you will end up with flash because there's lots of advantages to flash photography. Not to say that you won't use constant lights or even mix them together and do many things, but ultimately flash has a lot of advantages to the still photographer. Now clearly, if you are somebody that does uh, video as well and you, and you go on to use lighting for that, you can't really use flash so much for video. There are some lights that have modeling lights or constant lights that they call them that are for video. If you're doing video, buy video lights. I mean, that's just my opinion. Sorry, pro photo. Uh, you know, they're, they're not strong enough. Get the right lights, you know. That, that's it. I mean, uh, ultimately, you want the right tool for the job. You can use the modeling light. You can use the built-in light in a flash to shoot video. If you want lights for video, get video lights. If you're shooting stills, flash is going to almost always be a good choice. Now, there are some disadvantages to it, of course, and we'll go through kind of all of that. Um, but the main advantage of flash is that it gives you control. And if you are lighting something, control is something that you want. You know, if I have to battle the environment, then I have to make compromises and I can't necessarily do exactly what I want, right? I'm not always in a room with no lights in a dark space. You know, I'm not always there, right? I'm not always shooting a still life. You know, if you put me in a completely blacked out room with a light bulb and a still life, I could make any exposure I want because I can move stuff around, use a tripod, if I'm shooting a portrait, I can't do a super long exposure necessarily. It might be blurry, or I might have to use a higher ISO. So there's reasons to have the power that flash gives you. So to demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to use this Savage. <laughs> what is this? This is the Savage LED 1000. I will try to name all the equipment as we go, but I will probably forget after I just said this now. So this is basically an LED light. It's very bright. This is what you use for uh, rewind. For rewind, if you guys watch out around rewind with Seth Miranda on Mondays at 10 or whenever it is. Well, yep, okay. Uh, <laughs> 2 p.m. Monday is at 2. Uh, you can see Seth, and he uses this light, and he looks damn good with it. Oh, thank you. Yep. If you, yeah, if you see him in person, you'll see this light is actually very good. So this is an LED light. LED lights are great, right, because they don't get hot, you know, and they're, they're, I'm assuming this is daylight balance. I haven't turned it on yet. We'll find out in a second. Um, and yay, right? But when we turn this on, yeah, we'll show off the lights, see what this does. All right, I'm not gonna make a pretty light because I don't wanna waste a lot of time on not flash because this is the flash thing, right? Um, so we turn this on, you can come to the center. You feel like you're in a spotlight? She's a spotlight, okay. So we can light her up, we're gonna take the light, let's make a shot. Now it's important whenever you're lighting, somebody always asks me, Daniel, where do you point the light? Not at the audience, right? You guys will hate that. So we wanna just point it this way, yeah. Okay, so don't worry about the shadows and stuff right now. This is more of a power thing. What, what happened? Oh. We might not have any lights. We might use the Savage light to light the room, which is good, you know, if you have constant lights. Well, I will in a second. All right, we've got her. She's lit up, right? We're basically done. If this was a constant light uh, thing, we'd be done already. We could have dinner, but it's not. I am going to break out. This is a light meter. 
We're going to use a light meter for these next few times um, because, well, we might mix up a little bit, uh, because I think a light meter is super useful to have. There are people that will tell you. Daniel. Well, they'll tell you. So Bob, right? Whatever your name is. You don't need a light meter. I have a digital camera. I can just take pictures until I get it right. Well, I'm sure that your client loves to sit there while you're experimenting with the exposure, but my clients don't want that. So light meter is going to allow us to set up our light as close as possible to perfect before we get the subject in front of us, except in the case of doing a demo where she's already standing there, right? So I'm going to take my light meter. I'm going to set my ISO at 100. Uh, and I feel like I'm using a 70 millimeter lens. I can hand hold it at around uh, 125th of a second. So I'm going to start there. And I'm gonna, it's going to give me an f-stop. So I'm going to point it at the light. That's a pretty good one, right? That's great. You like that one? Yeah. It was, it's a nice number. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right, good. We're done. All right. 2.82. Now, unlike you guys with your fancy lenses with 2.8, I don't have that, right? I don't have a 2.8 lens. I have an f4 lens. Uh, you know, have Adorama give me a raise. Maybe I'll get a better lens next year. So this is, I, I can't shoot at this, right? I'll be dark. So what can I do? Once you've made your exposure with the light meter, I can actually adjust it. I can bring my shutter speed down to a 60th, which automatically it will, I should probably show this. Is it lit when I do that? No, too dark. That's a vignette, huh? Oh no, that's just the light on the wall. One day I'll learn what each one of these lights are. Yeah. Can we see that? That's how I have to hold it? Okay. So we can see that it's at 2.8 and then I bring the, uh, right? Now it went to F4, right? Because shutter speed, when you're dealing with a constant light source and you, you do a longer shutter speed, proportionately your, your aperture uh, can be closed down. So we'll shoot at the 60th. I'll just try to be very steady. I've had a little bit of coffee. I'm probably doing OK. Now, what's the other thing I could have done there? Change the ISO. Yes, went home and cried. No, yeah, change the ISO, right? I could have went to 200 ISO. You know, the kids these days are always shooting 200 ISO. That would also work. The kids these days. Yeah, well, they like 200. All right. I got my camera here. It's an icon, just like in the Paul Simon song. I'm going to set it at a 60th of a second. I'm going to set it at f4. Or would you rather me do 125 at 200 ISO? 200 what do you guys like? Oh, you like that. OK. All right, we're going to go 200 ISO. All right, 200 ISO. Here we go. F4, 125th of a second, 200 ISO. Whew. What's going to happen here? I'm not sure. This is like a passport picture. Okay. I'm going to shoot vertical, because that's what the kids do. You look good. Mm. You didn't make sure the model knows they look good, right? So you be like, you look good. You say that kind of stuff. There she is, right? Yay, who needs flash? Thanks for coming, guys. Good to go. <laughs> so that's all fan and dandy. And wonderful, right? She looks good. It's 125, so it's probably sharp. Because I shot it, so it could, might not be. Yeah, it should be. It might. Right? Um, you have stabilization. Right. I don't have any modifier on the light, which would absorb light, but that's not terrible, right? That's actually a decent workable uh, exposure if, with this 1,000 uh, LED. It's OK, right? But if I were to take, let's say, this thing, what that is? It's $1,000. This thing, this is a pro photo, actually not anymore. This is a Profoto A1. This is a small flash, on-camera flash, speed light, whatever you like to call it. That is what this is, right? Small flash. Oftentimes, we call them on-camera flashes because the bottom of them have a hot shoe. So I can put it on top of my camera. There we go. Put that on there. Boom. You make a picture. You're done, right? Now, if I change this from D group because D can't do TTO, if I put this in C group, all right. Oh, should I do this all manually with the light meter? Yes, I should, right? I'm going to do it. I know, I know. Getting, getting excited here. I lost my camera. There it is. If I take my flash, how many hands have I got? I'm going to put it on my camera. Give me a camera. Okay, what happened? I'm used to using stuff with batteries. All right, here we go. All right, good. I'm, I got this. That's why Seth's here. You made it worse. Not Look at that. Worse. Walk this way. Walk around it. OK, oh, I, got, I got you. I got you. We're good. All right. Cut that part out of the video. We're good at it. OK. <clears throat> Let's say that I have this flash, and I'm like, you know what? 
I don't like to shoot at 200 ISO because that's what the kid's doing. I'm not a kid. I'm going to go to 100 ISO. I don't care. And let's say, for instance, I want to shoot at F8. Why? Because I want to. Once I heard somebody say F8 and be there, right? I got my flash top of my camera. I'm going to throw it into TTL. You know what that means? Through the lens, right. Through the lens metering, which means that my flash is going to use the camera's meter system. Okay? It doesn't mean that you're not metering. It means that you're using the metering system in the camera. First, I have to turn the head on. Head on. All right, here we go. All right, I'm in TTL. We don't need this anymore, right? Yeah, we'll leave it on. Why not? Because first of all, with my new settings, let's take a picture. A little dark, right? I can fix that later. Or, throw my flash on. And there we go. My flash has overpowered this bright photo light that's shining on Allison, right? Now, that's a nice bright photo light. Imagine if it was just the lights in the room, right? Let's say we don't have this, right? And then we, because maybe you're thinking, man, you need to have this small flash and the lights. No, I don't need that. So let's take another shot without the, without the hot light. Now we got that, right? Now I'm like, oh man, it's so dark in here. I'm gonna have to go to like ISO like 400. And not even the kids do that. But no, I turn my flash on. I turn this on and off a lot, you see that? Yeah. I'm gonna go like that, boom, done. Right? There she is, she's lit up. Consistently, right, no matter what's going on, Right? They look the same, more or less, right? Because I'm in TTL, the flash is compensating, right? Whether that light was on or not, it looks good because, well, good relative, it looks exposed properly, right? Because the flash is power, powerful, right? This flash is powerful. This little tiny flash that I could put, well, maybe Seth could put in his pocket. Can I put it in my pocket, do you think? Hold on. Uh, I'm waiting with faded breath. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing skinny jeans. Yep, all right. Is that your thing? You're the first person to ever put a flash in your pocket? I didn't know that. Awesome. That's the success thing. I'm sorry I took it. It is now my thing. Did you really? You put it in your pocket? Go ahead. Forget I did that, guys. I didn't do it, that Seth thing. I can put it in my pocket, right? Small, small flash. Powerful relative to constant lights. Powerful relative to studio flash, not so much, right? But we'll get into that in a second. So now we know, right? With this little tiny flash, I can overpower the light in the space. I can come into here, and we made a shot of you earlier. Remember I made a shot of you earlier? It was a good one, too, right? Boom, that was a shot of you, right? You look beautiful. But I can also do this, right? I go, hey, look at the audience. Everybody smile. You gotta make sure you smile. I could... All right, I'll go wide. Oh, here we go. Ha ha, boom, right. Bam, lit up, done, right? <laughs> Everybody looks great. On camera flash, looks terrible, right? But it's powerful, it gives you the power to do the thing you need to do, right? No glare in the glasses though. No glare in the glasses, <laughs> I'm an expert at that. <laughs> okay, so why is this? Why, 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 Daniel, why? Because flash is happening, well first of all, it's really powerful, right? The thing with flash is that it's happening really, really quickly, right? Which is why we can increase our shutter speed uh, you know, to, to eliminate the light in the space because the flash is just going off really quickly, right? The, the, the ambient light takes time, right? The three factors that you think about when you're, you're setting up your camera, your, your ISO, your, your shutter speed, and your aperture, the only things that really matter for, uh, for flash is the, the aperture and the shutter, uh, the aperture and the ISO, right? The shutter speed, you can go, go higher if you need to to eliminate light in the space. You can also go lower if you want to mix it with the light in the space. You have that freedom to do that, and you can create the shot you want, right? So if I wanted to show some ambience in the room, I could do that. I have the choice. The choice gives me control, like we talked about earlier. Flash is all about control. So if I wanted, let's say that Allison was over here with the, with the, the store you know, behind her, right? Because that's how she likes to stand. I grab my camera. And I'm like, hey, 
You know, you're talking to yourself because you're making a portrait. You got to talk to them. Hey, what did you do for lunch or whatever, right? So we're doing that. <laughs> and I'm at my settings that I'm at, my, my settings. And I go, hey, there she is, boom, right? So this is going to light her up, right? She looks great, right? Oh, you look great. Hey, you look great. It's dark back there. If I start bringing my shutter speed down, let's say to, I don't know, an eighth of a second, because I'm at F8, so why not be all eights? Super eight. That was a good movie, right? <laughs> There we go, right? We're bringing the store up. So it's getting brighter behind her. You guys are starting to come up. I can also open up a bit. Let's say I'll go to a quarter of a second and I'll go to F4, right? Because you always have to, that has nothing to do with nothing. But I'm doing it anyways. Right? There she is. Now we got a quarter of a second. We're getting lit up. Now we're probably starting to pick up a little bit of blur. We'll see. Yeah, a little bit. We're getting a little camera shake there. Why is that? Because the light in here, now if I take my flash off, so we gotta watch what we're doing here, because now with no flash, right, there's a lot of light on her. So if you're gonna mix your flash with available light, you gotta think about the light in the space before you do it, because if the available light hits your subject, you know, you're out of luck. You are out of luck. Come forward a bit. Yeah, no, can't get around that light, really. I mean, you can put something over her head. Oh, what a convenient. <laughs> oh, how convenient, right? I can go like this, knock a lot of that light away. No, I don't want you to do it. I can do it. Not very effectively, but I can do it, boom. <laughs> right, that's a little bit better. Not perfect, nice and close. right? And it's nice and close, right up in your face, right? Because Because I can't block all the light. Make sense so far? Yeah, that light's hitting her, that's what it is. Okay, that's mixing stuff, which we talk about in the advanced class, so we're not getting too far into that, but just so you understand, you're working on two different things here. Your flash only cares about the ISO and the uh, the aperture. Your your Constant light cares about all three numbers, okay? So generally when you're using flash, what you wanna do is set your camera. Ah, see, I do this a lot, so you guys probably know what I'm gonna say here. You're gonna set your camera at the lowest ISO because that's gonna generally give you the cleanest picture. You're gonna set it at the fastest shutter speed that your flash works with your camera, they call it the sync speed or the X-sync, right? That's gonna help you eliminate as much as possible of the interior space. Then from there, you'll pick your, your aperture based on the style that you wanna do, and also that it'll be closed down enough that you get rid of the light in the space if that's what you're aiming for, which is what we are doing, right? Make sense so far? Okay. So, light meter recommendation. I lost my meter already. No, it's in my pocket. Okay, it depends on what you're doing. If you are getting a light meter, your first light meter, Daniel's first light meter, it's like a coloring book. Uh, this is a good one, L308XU, uh, Seconic. Seconic. They make a lot of different uh, meters. This one's super simple, super basic. It probably has what 90% of you guys will use uh, most of the time. They also make a more advanced one that I will use during the advanced, advanced class, right, exactly, that does all kinds of crazy stuff. It's like plays Pac-Man, it's like nuts. Uh, this one is, I mean, probably the electronics have updated in the years, but this one is pretty much identical to it has been for like 20 years. It's one of the very first meters I've, I've ever had. Um, it yeah, it does cine, cine uh, you know, uh, shutter, shutter speeds, uh, if you'd like. Frames per second, I should say. Um, it does the basics. It reads ambient, it reads flash. That's all you need, right? That's, that's mostly what you need when you're doing uh, this kind of stuff. So if you were going to use this meter, probably do a whole thing on just metering. I think you did a video on that. Yeah, Seth did a great meter video on metering, so if you guys want to watch it. But if you're using this meter and you want to, let's say, mix the light in here, what we would do is we would read the ambient light first, which we were doing earlier, right? And I would see that it's a 68th at 1.45, so just a little bit under F2. Um, and then I would know that I would me measure my flash, and then I could do math. The more advanced meters do the math for you, you know, so you pay for a math teacher, I guess. Okay. That makes sense so far? Mm -hmm. So, here's the other thing. I, I mentioned that flash happens really quickly. You know that if I were to, to light up somebody, or you've probably done this before, if you, let's say you just set your camera at like a 15th of a second, uh, you're gonna get some camera shake if, if light's hitting it, right? If there's no light hitting it though, and you use a slow shutter speed with flash, it will not cause blur because the flash duration or the amount of time the flash is firing becomes your shutter speed, right? So. I don't know if we can make it dark enough in here to, to do some, to do like a little bit of a, uh, like a, yeah, a little bit of a drag. Yeah. All right. Let's, we're going to go into the dark again, guys. I'm just going to use a flash and use nothing. I just want to show. Come into the center for me. 
All right, so we've got Allison here. I'll turn the flash off. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my light meter. Now you can't see me, so I'm just going to do this like a radio show. I'm in ambient mode. I'm going to read. Ah, EU, European Union. Okay, so I'm getting at a quarter of a second, I'm getting F1, right? So in theory, so I'll go down to half a second. Half a second, I'm getting 1.4. Now we want our shadows to be at least three stops darker than our, our key, right? So if I am going to be, uh, uh, I'm going to be half a second, I need to make sure that my flash is going to read three stops brighter than 1.4, which is F4, right? That sounds right. It better not be 2.8 because I don't have that. All right, so it's F4 is definitely there, right? To, so yeah, it's exactly right. Okay, so you know that at a quarter of a second, I'm probably getting a, bl a blurry photo. Let's see if that's the case with the flash. Not the flash, like the TV show with the superhero that runs really fast in the red tights. Superheroes don't really wear tights so much anymore. What do we got there? No, no flash exposure because Daniel didn't uh, turn the flash on. But the reason for that is, I'm gonna come over here just to show you guys. That is basically what, what it looks like when I'm in, in the morning, right? So it's just slightly blurry. Actually, I look a lot more blurry than that in the morning. So we're blurry at a quarter of a second, right? But what I also found out there uh, was that that's not enough, right? F4 is not getting it dark in here. I want to eliminate this light. So I'm going to go to F8. Quarter of a second, F8. Let's try another one. Again, no flash. All right, now she's basically, I mean, you can see her a tiny bit, but she's basically gone for all intents and purposes, right? There she is. Yep, there she is, she's blurry. That's pretty much what, what it always looks like when I shoot. Um, so now I add the flash. Oh. All right, this is the good one, maybe. Okay. Okay, I'm just testing you guys. Try that again. Oh, well, that's interesting. There we go. Oh, yeah, mugshot. Perfect. And we see that she is sharp and crispy, right? Now, you're like, but Daniel, you have steady hands. You are super steady like a, like a rock. But, oh, that was a little premature. Hold on, let me do that again. Here we go. You ready? This is exciting. My tether is gone. Probably because I didn't start a new session after Seth told me to. Is it back? Is it back? Yep. Okay, here we go. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, I lost the other again. No, it, it came up. Did it? That's it, right? Three shots, right? Yep. Did you see what I did there? Probably not because I had the lights turned off. But did, did you guys see what I did? No, right? Watch me again. Oh. Here we go. Oh, you saw that, right? A little crooked, right? Because Daniel moved the camera while I was shooting a lot, right? Watch this. Oh, he slides back, still sharp. Why? Because the time that the flash goes off is my exposure. Doesn't matter that the camera's running for half a second, right? The fact of the matter is, as soon as that flash goes off, I'm done. Right? I can do anything I want with the camera. I can put it back in my pocket. Right? Boom. Still going to be nice and sharp and finished. If it decides to work because I'm losing my tether like crazy. Should I restart? Uh, you want to talk while we start? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk while Seth restarts it. Let's turn the light on. Okay. So that gives you a couple of things, right? One is that you can go beyond what you normally would be able to do as far as freezing action. So let's say that you are somebody who shoots food, right? I love to use food as the example because nobody thinks food photographers need to stop action. They need to stop action more than anybody else because they do things like splashes and pours, right? You want to pour some wine into a glass and then drink it. But you want to pour some wine into a glass, right? You want to freeze that. You, you're gonna, you can use tons and tons of hot light to do that to crank up your shutter speed to a million, or you can use flash. Flash will do that. What you want to do is look at your flash system and you want to see what the flash duration is. And that, if that number is very high, then the higher it is, that's shutter speed. So you look at a light like the, 
the, the studio light that we're going to use, the B1X, that's something like 20,000th of a second when it's, you know, when, when it's at its lowest power. So you want to do a, a splash, bam, my camera doesn't even go to 20,000th of a second, right? It's like I can stop it because that's what the flash is going to do. It's going to be crispy. It's going to give me good, clean light. It's not going to be infected, thank you, by the area. See, even when it's Shut perfect. Yeah, there we go. Then that's a drag. That's for the advanced class. Seth can't do anything without doing a shutter drag. All right. I'm sorry. And thank God you'll be here next week because I can't do them to save my life. All right, so. You can't even tether, apparently, so it's okay. I can't tether. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot, though. That looks like, uh, yeah. Focus, yeah. I'll put that on my, my uh, Tinder. MySpace? MySpace? Yes. I remember MySpace. Of course. She's old. All right. What I liked about MySpace is you could put the music on there. You know, yeah, that was the best part of MySpace. All right, so anyways. Okay, right, so we got that, right? We figured that out, we're good to go. Now, if you were to do, let's say, what Seth just did, just to kind of show you, let's say that you didn't balance it correctly and you were like, oh, I'm moving around like a crazy person, you're gonna get uh, what's called a pop and blur, which barely happened there because I didn't move enough, I guess. Yeah, because there was no light in the shot. So you can even move it around. Yeah, because I'm at, I'm at only a quarter of a second. Let me go to one second. No, you know what? 1.6 seconds. Right? We can do that. And then we got it, that, right? It looks like somebody breathed on your lens. But basically what's happening is I move the camera, and you can actually see here. That's the blurriness of her going by. Okay, that we're going to do correctly for effect next session. But just so you know, you need to make sure you balance stuff correctly. Because if the ambient light does hit your, affect your shot, you got to take that into consideration. It's not like you use a flash. You know, they used to say, oh, use a flash and your pictures will be sharp. No. Well, yeah, if there's no other light affecting the shot, right? I mean, it's like you need to make sure that you're eliminating that light, which is why I'm going to put my camera back up to its sync speed, which is 160th of a second, I think. It's somewhere around there. Now, when I shoot, it will definitely be sharp, you know, and I couldn't possibly move the camera fast enough to, to be an issue, right? Now we're crispy and good. Right? Makes sense? And I'm just using the flash on my camera because um, I like to. Okay. Questions, thoughts, concerns. Does all this make sense so far? I'm being super basic because this is the basic flash thing. If you have a basic question, now's the time to answer. Uh, ask, brother. Do not ask me a basic question next week. You'll be balked. Okay, so what if we wanted to do this in like a nicer way? Like a, you're like, guys, Allison came all this way and you haven't taken any good pictures of her yet. And I'm like, oh, fine, okay. So let's, let's, make, let's just talk about the on-camera flash to start with because I do recommend it as, as your starting place, right? So if you want to make your flash look nicer, right? Generally, when people say nicer, they mean softer, right? To make a light soft, we have to make it Bigger, right. The hardness and softness of your light is based on the size of the light relative to the subject. So if we take this, which uh, passes around for tips, no, right? So we take this thing, right? Somebody at Pro Photos, like maybe smoking something a little funny, and they de develop this thing. It's a bonnet. Uh, you know, you wear it on your head. This goes on top of my flash. This makes it bigger, right? Boom. But Actually, you have kind of a small head. It's about the same size as her head, right? So in theory, if I put it right next to her and I'm just shooting her head, it should be soft. But I'm not going to be right on top of her with it. So it's going to be a little hard, but softer than the... Uh... Watch this. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, look at that. Uh -huh. This should make it a little nicer. Let me start with my cable. There we go. Should we do horizontal or do you want to do vertical? What do you like? What do you guys want to see, horizontal or vertical? Vertical. 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 All right. Yeah, you can tell you all the old people are yelling. All right. Here we go. Should I do a half a face just to piss that off? All right. All right. So we've created a bit of a softer light, right? We have this beautiful shadow on the background, which is glorious, right? But we can see that under her chin and stuff, although the positioning of the light is not as nice, hard light, right? What lens am I using? This is the Nikon something, 24 to 70 f4 zoom lens, all right? Hard light, right? Bit softer, right? 
Also a little warmer, right? Anything you put in front of your light is going to affect it, whether it be a expensive, relatively, uh, you know, pro photo attachment or a cheap attachment. It's going to change the color on some level, so keep that in mind. That's why when you buy accessories, you should try to buy similar or the same ones because that way they'll work. If I use a pro photo bonnet and then I use a some other bonnet, which I'm sure somebody's already knocked this off for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would ever want this thing. Uh, I like this thing. Seth loves this. Um, he does, and he has one really good technique with it that I stole. One, one that, that I stole, though. The one that I stole. I didn't steal all of them. Um, So we can see it makes the light softer, but it's not tremendously soft. We need to make it much bigger to do that, right? And I'm kind of cheap and lazy, to, you know, so, which is a good combination. And single. And single, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so maybe I don't want to buy accessories, you know? Maybe instead I go to the Brooklyn Dollar Store hey. and I buy myself a Brooklyn reflector, right? This Brooklyn reflector is bigger than Allison's head by quite a bit, actually. In fact, when I buy my reflectors, I base them on head sizes. If I make this my light source, because the last thing your light hits is your light source. Person that's gonna say that's not the case in comments. All right, I make this my light source. That seems good, right? Yeah. I wanna point the flash at it. Sit on my cord, aren't you? You ready? My arms don't move like that, but I'm gonna try it. Because I'm in TTL, it should theoretically. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. I got a shadow on the wall, and my composition is terrible. But all, all said and done, well, hey, listen, I'm not double jointed. I can't reach back. <laughs> See, we have two different philosophies on doing things. Myself and Seth. Seth likes to do this, get it in there. Me, I just grab people. Hold this for me. There we go. That's how I do it, right? Really from there? Wow. Really from there? <laughs> All right. You want the job or not? Jeez. Jeez. This is the reason why millennials can't get jobs. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so, just kidding. All right, okay. what do we want to do? Put it in a good spot, right? Right there is a good spot. Right here? All right. All right. Don't let it drift. Don't let it drift. All right. It's important when you're breaking it into a system, just make them stand there for a minute with it until they get a feel for it. All right, so I'm going to take this. I'm bouncing the light off this, it's gonna make it bigger. I'm gonna go horizontal now. Are you tilting your head? Yes, you are, okay. I thought I was crooked, but that was actually you. All right, good. Good, good, good. All right. There we go, right? Now we've got softer light, right? Beautiful light over there. Nice and, nice, coming from a direction, right? We got a little bit of fill uh, bouncing in just because of the wall or whatever. Fill. Yeah, this is we're going to bring some fill bouncing. You got some fill? fill that, do you need that fill? No, that's not oh. fill. I want fill. Oh. What do you want? I would like to have some fill bouncing, and I was getting ahead of myself. Well, why don't you turn her towards the light? Please? I could do that. First, I will turn her towards the light, as Seth is telling me to do. <laughs> is this your first demo? It's my first time I've ever done this before. All right. All right, so look towards the light source. This guy. All right, good. She's looking at the light, right? There it is, perfect, right? Right there. Now the light's coming from a preferable direction. She's got a little smile on her face because she thinks I'm crazy, which is not wrong, you know. Now, if you're the kind of photographer like I am and you just buy one flash on top of your camera and you just have maybe some friends or people that want to hang out with pretty girls so they come, you basically can get some foam paper, right? And we can bounce in the light, right? Well, I'll stretch the lens out too. I use a set term there. I'm gonna stretch the lens. All right, here we go. Boom. Right there, we go. Now we've got two pieces of cardboard and a flash. Boom. Right, and we're in the middle of a store. Well, not the middle of a store, kind of the side of the store. Right. We're killing all the light that's in the space. Right. We're creating a nice, pretty light on her because we're using flash. Right. The light in the space, remember, is. Oh, you can sit down for a second. Let me put the camera in professional mode. Oh, does this have professional? It just does. All right. So I switched to P for professional. I'm going to take a shot. Just so I remember. 
This is the light that's in the space, right? Oh, it's beautiful, right? Blurry, right? Sixth of a second, right? F4, whatever, 100 ISO. It is not a lot of light in here, right? We were able to shoot at, we were able to create this, right, with just this. Not even buying any accessories for it, right? So now we're gonna add some accessories. All right, here we go. Let's actually use a small flash to create a little bit of a nicer portrait, and then we're gonna switch to big flash. We'll talk about the difference there. Oh yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, you're doing good. We're all doing good. This is a soft box, right? The light that comes out of a soft box is the light that comes out of a soft box is diffused. The light that comes out of a soft box is diffused. diffused, right? Is it necessarily soft? It depends on what you're shooting, right? This is kind of small, but still bigger than your head, right? So as long as I don't put it way back here, I should be good to go, right? Put your lights close. That's what we want to do, right? So this is a Shamira extra extra small. Not just an extra small, but an extra, extra small. I went extra, extra small because my, my box was too big. All right. Should we boom it? I think so. Let's, let's lose the hot light for a second, I guess. All right. We're going to lose the hot light, which is very nice. Thank you, Savage. Whoa. It's, Savage is a piece of gear, I guess. I guess it's Seth's gear. No, it's probably not Savage's gear. But. All right. So I'm going to boom this out. This is a C-stand. Seth also made a video about a C-stand, so if you want to do that too. Make sure you put a sandbag on it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take this light source, I'm going to put it in the middle, because that's what we do. Hold on, though. How am I going to make it work? This is magic? <laughs> Seth. What can I do? I don't know. What I'm going to need is to fire my camera off, uh, my flash off camera. In order to do that, I need to use some kind of a remote, which, there it is. All right. I have so much stuff. All right. I just love when it falls apart when you're trying to be sarcastic. That's my favorite. All right. This is much like the other flash, except it is marked with a B. All right, that's the difference. I'm going to use this as my source. The other one I'm going to use is a remote. I'm going to use it to fire this. If you're working in the world of speed lights, this is often a good option. You can just get a remote that will fire this, but this gives me a backup flash too, right? So for a little bit more money, if you're just starting, you might be better off buying two flashes versus buying a flash and a remote, you know, if you can swing it budget-wise. This is true of, you know, all of the ones that have built-in radios, whether it be Profoto, or you know, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Minolta. All right. All right, good. That's over there. That's in the B group. I'm going to take my my camera. I'm going to look at this flash. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to take my flash, and I'm going to go into my menu, and I'm going to turn it off so that it will no longer fire. So it's only going to be a remote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at that, it's firing. Hey, first try. All right, so that's good. I'm going to raise my softbox. I'm going to have Allison step forward. Thank you. All right, this is the part where we're, we're, this is a, there's tensions building here, right? We have the softbox now. Once you break out the softbox, there's no more playing around. It's not like, oh, you got a flash on your camera. What are you going to do? You're using the softbox. This is like serious stuff here. So I got the softbox. I'm going to use TTL still because, you know, why not? Probably because I said I was going to use a meter the whole time, and then I haven't been because that's the kind of thing I do. I'm going to change my camera. No, oh, I'm in P mode, so I can't do that. All right, so I'm going to go to M, which is manual. I'm going to go back. F8, right? 1 one sixtieth of a second. ISO 100. Why am I at that setting? Because I know at that setting, none of the light in the space is affecting my shot. So I can always remember that unless the light changes. I lost my little doodad. We'll find it. All right. 
softbox. She's paying extra for this, so it better be good. Boom, right there we go. Softbox. What? What? Nothing? Nothing? Don't clap. You only just bought something. That's all I did. So. I spent $132 on this. You better clap. No, so there you go. Softbox, right? Not only are we taking the flash off the camera to control its direction, now we're giving you what? Control. Because what doesn't this give you, really? Control. Right, because this is just bouncing the lights. Oh, bouncing the light around. No, whatever. This is good, right? It's better than nothing. But <laughs> Bounce light is very nice. It's good for some stuff. But you want control. You want proper control. That's what something like a softbox is going to give you. And that's why we use softboxes. And they're soft. What? They're soft. Say, yeah, they're soft, sometimes diffused, right? So what a softbox is doing is it's adding, it's putting diffusion in front of your, your light, which is increasing the size of the light, because remember, the, light, the final thing the light goes through is the source, right? So now my source is 16 by 22. Is that 12 by 18? Whatever size this is, extra, extra small. Uh, it's this big, right? Way bigger than this, right? And it's diffused. Diffusion deals with my highlights. It's going to make it nice and smooth, right? Softness is going to give me a beautiful shadow. And then, you know, Ellie's going to just be beautiful. All right. But. Uh, oh, well, question flash. about slave flashes. What is a slave flash? So depending on your system, they use different terms for them. Remote, slave, which is not going to call it. That's you for basically anything that's not the main flash that's being controlled off camera is generally referred to as a slave flash. There's a couple of different ways you can fire it. One is by using uh, like TTL like this. So I'm actually controlling this in TTL. The other way is to just have it fire automatically when another flash fires. You know, that works pretty well and sometimes can be better than radio because sometimes radio has interference. So uh, it's useful to have. Not every flash does that, Karen, uh, but Nikons do. <laughs> and for photos, doesn't. So, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so it's useful. You know, uh, the only problem is if you're around other people flashing, it'll fire, it'll fire go up as well, right? Uh, back in the day, we used to have to run those little, 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 little eyes on cords out to where the flash gets to see it. Now we have radios, so. The ween peanut. peanut slaves, exactly. So that's pretty nice, you know? She's like, ah, it called the law firm of Allie and Allie. All right, but let's say we want to make it a little bit more uh, even or, or soft uh, in the shadows. I'm going to use big, right? Big equals soft. We're going to bounce light. Now, when you're bouncing light, it's important to make sure that your light is touching the bounce. I know that sounds really simple, but I can't tell you the number of times I've seen people with reflectors that were not being reflecting any light because they weren't in the right spot. So make sure it's reflecting. If you're not sure, do that, right? So you can look, or sometimes just ask the model. You, if, if you have a very practiced, you know, Allison went to uh, ballet school for many years, so she can hold the, the, card, the card very nicely. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a good idea to have your subject hold it. But as we know, I'm lazy, so I'm going to have her hold it. Boom, there we go. Right, now we're nice and filled in, if we like that. I kind of like the moody stuff, but that's me. All right, so different, same thing with the little fill, right? Now she's not going to know which one to get. She'll be like, I don't know which one to choose. And you'll be like, you could get both and then charge, right? Is this clamshell lighting? Kind of. I mean, clamshell, uh, there's, uh, clamshell lighting means that basically you've got light from the top and the basically your bottom light is filling in. Usually it's referred uh, to when you're using two actual uh, lights so you have more control. But sure, a, a reflector underneath is basically clamshell, I would say. I mean, I'm not one to name things, except for the Brooklyn reflector. All right, questions, thoughts, concerns. Easy, right? All right, that's why we're using flash, right? Control, we can get the light where we want it. We can create this shot, right? Well, those shots, both of them. Well, that was... In this space, when the light in here actually looks like that, right? If you come into this space and you're like, I like to use the environment, you know, you're, that's what you're gonna get, right? Flash is gonna take that away, right? It's gonna give you the power to fill in the light and to, to make it happen, and really fast and easy, right? Okay, so. I'm using small flash because I feel like that's where most people should start if they're just looking to get into it. But there's a whole other level of flash, and you could guess what it's called. Big flash. 
big flash, we'll call it. Basically, you've got mono lights or, I mean, less so today, pack and head systems, you have larger flash units, right? So where the, where the small units are designed to go on your camera, these are really designed to go onto light stands or a very strong assistant to hold them, right? This happens to be battery powered. They're not all battery powered, okay? Power, right? Why do we want more power? Well, I mean, we always want more power, right? But this is 500 watt seconds, which means nothing. But when you think about it compared to the small flash, which is 75 watt seconds, it gives you an idea that this is a much more powerful unit, right? More juice will come out of this. More juice means we can either use a more closed down uh, aperture, which means you can shoot in brighter spaces or have more depth of field if you want it, or we can keep the power lower and shoot faster because a flash has to recycle, right? A flash has to prepare itself again every time it fires. I mean, back in the day, when Allison was shooting, you know, she had double A batteries in her flash and it was like, she'd take a picture and be like, you know, but now, these, nowadays they're fast. All right, so bigger unit means bigger modifiers are possible, right? Now I can use this thing, right? This is an octagon. Like you think you're cool with a softbox. When you bust out an octagon, you'd be like, oh, I got an octabox over here, you know, it's octabox, yeah, look at me. This is gonna make you look cool. Uh, it's bigger, so bigger equals softer, right? Softer is good, right? Bigger equals softer means that you can do one of two things. Either back it up if you need to, right? And keep the same softness you would have with a smaller one. Or you can move it in closer and have more coverage in the body. Because sure, we made that beautiful shot of her face with this box, but if I had gone wide with that, she was probably dark at, you know, from like here down. So that's not very useful if I'm trying to shoot, yes. Oh, look at you with the wraparound light. You're, you're trying to get that loom cube. That's what he wants, that free loom cube. All right, we're not giving that away yet. Yeah, so the light also, there's more light to play with, right? More light to wrap around as for, for bouncing. We'll do that. That's a good, good point. All right, try and take my job. All right, here we go. It's important. When you're mounting a softbox onto a light, I'm going to do this correctly for one time because we're doing it during a demo. I know what you want to do. You want to put it so the pro photo is upside down. You never do that. No. Okay. Everybody goes like this. They take it and they go, uh, 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 you know. If you want to put a big flash onto a softbox, you need to put the softbox on the ground and put the flash into it. This is the correct procedure. If I show up on your set and you're not doing it this way, well, I probably won't do anything as long as you have snacks. All right, here we go. Now it's much safer. We're good to go. And you know, if you know one thing about me, I'm all about being safe. All right, so um, this actually uses the same system because it's also Profoto uh, as the other one. So I'm going to set this guy up to be, well, I could do that up as slave, I guess, if we want to do that. But I'm going to set it up to be, uh, I think I want channel seven. And I'm going to make this one A. All right. OK, we'll test it to see. Am I not on seven? Yeah, seven. There we go. All right. They both fired because you can fire more than one flash. Crazy, right? Whew. All right. You guys ready? We doing this? Okay. I'm wearing this hat, which is very hot. The things I do for fashion, you know, look cool for you guys. You know, it's like here I am trying to look good. My Adorama hat. Nobody else has a hat like this. All right. Here we go. Now, if you remember, when, you, when I said when you light with a hot light, you always light with the light away from the audience because you don't want the audience to get blinded. With the flash, you can light towards the audience if you want. doesn't matter. I'm going to light this at a, at a three-quarter angle because I want to talk about the, the wraparound, right? So, so because we're using a large light source and we only have a little Allison, we don't need to put it so super close to her, right? I can actually back it up a little bit and give myself some space to move. That gives me kind of some, uh, some light to play with. So come a little forward, though. Why I'm moving her forward is actually because I'm thinking about the background, right? Because the light's over here. I can actually spin it more this way, get more of it off the background, meaning the background will get darker. Because if no light hits the background, it's going to be black, right? Because even though you can see it, I'm overpowering the light in the space. Because that's just how I am. All right, so that light over there is B, right? I told you it was B. I'm going to turn it off if I knew how. 
There we go. It's off. I'm also going to turn off C because why not? All right. I'm going to now leave this in TTL because why not? actually, let's use a meter. Let's go back to metering just so I can mess with you guys. So we're going to turn B up. Okay. I only have A going, right? Let's do a quick test. I do the meters in my pocket still. No. Lost the light meter, so there it is. Got it. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn my light meter on. I'm now going to put it in flash mode. I'm going to set my shutter speed here uh, to 125. To the person who sent me the email saying that this does go to 1160, I know, but you have to program it, and this is not mine. So, well, actually, I could, just got this, so I should program it. So it's only going to go 125 because the meter is only set to do that uh, right now. You can actually set this to do thirds of stops if you want. All right, ISO 100, 125. <clears throat> okay, we're going to test this. Metering towards the light, eight and a half. I mean, we could live with that, I suppose. But since I can control this from here, Oops. There we go. Eight. So now, in theory, hopefully in practice, you can look at me. All right, we're going to have that light, right? Nice, big, beautiful octagon light, kind of a grayish background, right? Nice fade going on. I know what you're saying. You're like, wow, Daniel, I was about to buy that small flash, and now I see this, and I'm like, oh my god, no. This is so much nicer, right? Bigger flash, more power, bigger box, right? Wrapping around, right? Creating a different look. We still have some shadow over there. If we want to bounce light in, you know, why not? I got this, right? Boom. <laughs> there we go, right? Boom. That's your high school picture. Done. Yeah. Well, this one, this one, this one's college. All right. Right, we got a little mood, and then we got a little, little little fill, right? Depending on how you want to go, easy, right? But this light, when we were shooting before, was set at something like seven, so the range is one to ten. This one is at six and a half, so it's about half a stop, uh, half of a, a unit less power in a much bigger box, further away, right? So more power, right? So I'm able to actually work fast. Like this light will recycle like crazy. All right, we're gonna shoot fast. Whew, you guys ready? Do like a model to be like, oh, yeah, model, yeah, I'm moving. Okay, okay, here we go. Let's see if I can keep up with it. Work it, girl. Right? We can shoot fast, right? Because we have a big light. Big light works fast, right? Work boom, boom. It. You know, I charge by the frame, so this makes me lots of money. I'm like, whoa, okay, you know, that's just five frames done. But this is how you don't, you know, you, you never miss a frame. Wasn't that one of their sales pitches? Never miss a shot, right? It's whatever. Right? That's what the big flash is going to do for you, right? You're not going to miss the shots because you can keep shooting, right? Or it's going to let you dial down. Let's say we want to shoot some crazy, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm like, you know what? Ah, F8. Ah, I don't like that. I like to shoot at F18. Why F18? Who knows? Real photographers shoot at F18. Oh, too dark. Oh, maybe it's not enough for that. Forget that happened. No, it's still, it's, oh, because I'm a manual. Come on, guys. You made me look bad. I told you I was in manual. Do the math now for me. 11, 16. Okay, so three stop. Sorry. I'm going to go over here and adjust it. God. We're going to have to stop the live stream if this keeps up. All right. I'm just going to turn it up to 10 because at some point during the shoot, you just got to turn it up to 10. And I'll go F20. There we go. Bam. She's nuclear. All right, nope. <laughs> no, no, I like the bright highlights. It's very beautiful. It's just like Instagram. So by the way, if, if, if you didn't have a light meter, even though at the beginning I said you should use a light meter and whatever, I always still will show you because I'm not that guy. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, it's kind of bright. I'm not gonna just keep taking pictures to get it right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and capture one and I'm gonna be like, hey, capture one. Here's my exposure slider. I'm gonna dial it down. That looks about right. And I'll look right here and I'm gonna be like, oh, 1.13 stops. So now I can go over to my light. And that should be good. We'll try that. We should get closer that way, right? 
I should put this, there we go, right? That's the other way to do it. In Capture One, easy, right? I'm using Capture One if I didn't say that already. This is the tethering software you definitely should get. I recommend tethering always. You know, that way when you're shooting your mom, she can be like, oh, wow, that's great, you know, and she'll see it, or she'll be like, oh, what? But no, you want to see the shots right away, and this is giving you the actual photo, right? We're not just looking at, oh, wow. Look at that octagon in the eye. You know you paid for that shot. Like, ain't nobody shooting for free with an octagon box. Give her a snappy fill. Oh, snappy fill. All right, Seth spent a long time with the squeegee making the silver side of this. So we're going we're gonna to fill it in. I did it live. He did, he did do a lab. All right. All right. By the way, this little crunch circle there is me putting it on a C-stand. And, you know, that, that's a bit of Seth's heart falling away. All right. Good, you good? Before I show up, you were all a caveman using horrible reflectors. We were using horrible reflectors. Boom, now it's snappy. That's definitely your high school picture. Did you get this? Oh. oh. Now, if you want to be super cool, you can cut your Brooklyn Reflector into an octagon shape. And people will be like, you have two I'm octagon lights. That you're cutting off the top of her head. It's fine with How it. dare you? How dare we cut off the top of her head? You can only take photos of complete heads. You, you will never get the top of the head online, people. No. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're going to go back. Actually, so I'm just going to go like this now because I feel like it. I'm just like, you know, I'm here doing a photo shoot with Allison. I feel like messing around. I'm going to throw it back in TTL. What? Because now I want to shoot at f4. Because I'm that kind of guy that changes my aperture all the time because, you know, I feel like it. Wait, is it going to work? Let's see. In theory, that should give us a better explosion. There we go, right? f4. There you go. So that's a quick way to change it as well. If you, you can go to TTL to get a quick exposure. If you're shooting something in the studio, though, that's going to be set up, once you get your exposure set, I would switch it back to manual. The reason for that is whenever you use TTL, there's basically this little tiny photo assistant that runs out with a meter and meters and runs back to the camera every single time, which means every exposure might be a tiny, tiny bit different. What you might say, who cares, Daniel? Well, the reason why is because when you go into post and you want to do you know, group things, you don't want to have to mess with every photo. You want them to be all the same. Even if they were all under, by let's say, a quarter of a stop, at least they're all the same. If you're running around shooting an event, leave it in TTL because every shot is different. But if you're in a studio, once you're set up, switch back to manual. Um, and we're good to go, right? So that's it. And you can mix them together. This is one of the things. Uh, now that I have, I hate this, but I'm going to do it because I have another camera. Now that I have two lights, right? Let's say I didn't want to hold the reflector. I didn't have one with me because, you know, I spent a lot of money on this octagon box. I couldn't afford a piece of cardboard. So I didn't have pizza that day for lunch, so I can't do the set thing. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn this light on. On camera, Phil. This is totally Seth's thing. I hate this, but I'm going to do it for you. I'm doing it for you. I'm putting the dome. I'm putting the whole apron thing. All right. The bonnet. All right. I'm putting on the apron. Because nothing says cool more than walking around with something like this on top of your camera. Like, you walk around at a party, you're like, hey, man. Yeah. All right. I, the dome's on there. It's on there. It's on the thing. Oh, All right. Whew. I'm putting it like this because. Why is the background going dark? The background is going dark because only the flash is affecting my shot. If I were to turn off my flash, well, actually, at this point, it might get a little gray back there because we went down to F4 to be cool. See? There you go. That's the background with no flash. The reason why it's going gray is because the flash is basically just barely kissing it. You know, we're, we're hardly getting any back there. In fact, we can make it go black if we really wanted to. Do you want to see it black? Yeah. I know what you're saying. Right now, you're like, Daniel, what are you doing? The light's not pointing at her. Well, you know, sometimes you got to shoot. Hold on, does it be good if I? No, OK. That's interesting. Well, when I turned it off and then back on, I lost my little controls. All right, there we go. I didn't know that would do that. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. It's set. I should trust the computer. All right, I'm not using the flash on the camera right now. I'll just turn it around like this. What am I doing again? I get confused by that for a second. Background. Black background. Here we go. I'm in TTL. Where am I? Where am I? I'm cutting off the top of her head. There we go. 
Right? Background should get dark. Oh, not quite black. Wow. Wait, is that daylight still kicking? I don't think so. Yeah. All right. The things I do for you guys online. Wow. Something's not right. Yeah, Hold on. Something's, something's not working. We have to figure it out. We're, we're going to troubleshoot. No, that's off. No, it's definitely not, because I can see it hitting over there. Wow. OK, this octagon really wraps the light, right? So, well, I know what I'm going to do. So guys, I wasn't going to bust this out to the advanced flash class. Well, you can do that. That would also work. You know what this is? This is a grid, AKA egg crate. I always put it on backwards. Seth is going to yell at me. I have to look at the angle of it. Or just look at the tag. I'm going to look at the tag. So when you put this on, you got to put it on correctly. Otherwise, Seth will come to your studio and yell at you. So the tag should be on the outside. Your studio is my studio. That's true. That's probably why he does it to me. All right, here we go. You know, Seth shows up. He's like, your red crate's not on there, right? Listen, I'm not a conformist like he is. I do cry about it. All right, egg crate. What does this do besides double the price of your box? It's gonna narrow the spread, right? Thanks, MJ. Thanks, MJ. Oh, okay, now we're dark. Okay. So the lights haven't, so basically what's happening is the lights basically pointed at me so what's happening is the, uh, the TTO is confused because it's not up all the way. I just checked to make sure it wasn't up all the way. So I could either switch to manual now, or I think at this point with the egg crate, I probably can go, actually come closer to it. Look like forward to me, there we go. I should be able to do that, right? That'll work. Let's try it one more time. There we go. All right, perfect. Now it's not just hot, which is good. Well, it's too hot though. My exposure's hot. All right, well, all right, we'll do it. Little bouncy bounce, too flat. Yeah. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. That's too flat. Sometimes you use too much fill. Doesn't look good, right? So we want to determine how much. Look a little bit this way with the. There we go. That's it. Good, good, good. Oh. Right. Now we got her looking towards the light. Remember we did that earlier. A little mood. We cut off the top of her head. Looks good. Good scalp. Right. But now, now, brain now. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's going to do a hair light with a bounce. I'm going to try. Are you stupid, man? Right? Amazing. Oh, a little, little dark. It's okay. Yep. I'm going to switch to manual. Daniel's switching to manual. At this point, TTL is getting a little confused. It happens. I turned it up by three-tenths. Right. Let's just see what this looks like. A little dark still. So at this point, I'm finessing the light. Yeah. Good, good, good. Nice. All right. All right. Now we've got a little bounce coming in, giving some that that beautiful texture to her hair. Right. Filling in the shadows, a little silver action. Right. And we can still charge for two lights because people are going to think there was two lights there. Looks crispy. Background is black. Right. So what do we need to do to make, back, make the background black? Spend money. Right. Easy as that. <laughs> okay. You want to pull the acre? Yeah. Let's pull it. Well, now we leave it on. I'll leave it black. All right, so let's get back to where we were. All right, on camera or on access fill, right? Meaning that we are going to fill in from the, the camera position with a flash. This is very useful, especially in this kind of a system where, um, where I got the camera on, I got the flash on the camera anyways, right? I'm already, I'm already have a flash on the camera, so why not give this a shot before I start setting up a lot of other stuff? So I got my little bonnet. Um, this is set at, This is 6.7. I'll make it the same. 
I'm in manual. We're freewheeling. It's 6.04. I want to set it at 6. Why? Because it's 6.04. Sometimes you have to base, everything's, you know, photography is like science, but there's also this kind of like vibe that you have to go with. And you know, sometimes if it's 6 o'clock, you set your flash at 6. Yeah, why not? Yeah, it worked. Okay, there you go. That's how he does it. All right, there you go. <laughs> Did you give it away? Oh, we gave it away. You set the flashes. Like, there we go. Now we have on access fill, right? We got fill that's coming from the access. And now we can control our shadow density. So that's six. If we want five, we can turn it to five. Oh, hold on. That's not in focus. Good. There we go. We, now that gives us increased shadow density, right? Because the thing is, is that it depends on what you want your subject to look like when you're lighting them, right? So Allison's got kind of a nice rounded face, right? So she can look very youthful by filling her in all the way and showcasing that. If I want her to look a little bit more chopped, you know, a little, little more uh, edge to her face, right? To have a little bit more strength, then I want to have shadow. That's going to add shadow. Adding shadow is going to make her face have that strength. It's there. I'm not adding it or using the smudge tool, what tool is that in Photoshop where you push stuff? This, this, I have no the one where you push at it and it makes people less fat. Turning Egyptian, I don't know what this <laughs> What's the non-fat tool? Not Somebody knows liquefy? online. Liquify? It's not like you liquefy. This is liquefy to you? Well, that's what you point at, you push it. How else would you liquefy? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> We're gonna I, move on. I, yeah, I'm gonna move on. <laughs> right, we don't have to liquefy her, we can basically do it like this. Good. Right, and we can we can we can work our shadow. I dropped it another stop, so now we're shaping her face. Right now, if we want to really be crazy, where's that? Grab your card, my friend. This is it. This is you've been training this whole time for this. What are you gonna do with it? Hold it up. Yeah, wow, yeah. Yep. Where though? Yeah, that's right. Back here. That's it. That's it. You got it. Okay. The only problem is you are in the shot, sir. 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 You're in the yeah, shot. Listen. Hold it, hold it from just the bottom, in the top. There you go. Good, good, good. Well, you're in a little bit, but we'll leave you there. So this be the creepy guy in the back. Okay. Now we've got oh. fill from the front, kicking light in to fill the hair. <laughs> it's all good. It's it's all good, right? Well done. Thanks. And not even any kind of orange rate reflection from your shirt. No, the shoes. <laughs> well, the shoes would have for sure. Let's bright, reflect yeah. the shoes. Yeah. Take your shoe off and use it as a reflector. Really we quick. could do that, but we're not going to do that. Can okay. Probably. Yeah, it, it, no, we don't want to do that. That'll be, that's for Seth's demo. I know, well, we could use a gel for that. Well, I don't want to make people take their shoes off. I will used to, but I'm not taking somebody's shoes off. It's his first time. We're not taking his shoe off on the first time. Are you going to talk about gels? Do you want me to? Are you going to talk about gels? Do you think that's a basic topic? Do you think gels are a basic topic? Oh, it is advanced. See that? All right, let's do one. It is a, it is a basic gimmick. All right, let's use a gel. Okay, will you use your shoe? All right, yeah, 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 there we go. All right, yeah, yeah, we did that last time, though. Wasn't that last week? Well, this is how we keep a common thread. All right, good, good, good. All right, so let's say we have this thing. This is a padded envelope that was on sale from the holiday. Okay, I'm distracted, sorry. I was bright. Step, step, step back, step back. Very good. All right, oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to kill the on-camera fill. You line boxes? Yeah. Okay, so now we are just... It is pretty cool, actually. There was a purple one, too, at one point. Now we've got oh, a, a green reflection, right? Because we're bouncing the light off the green envelope. And that's what we're doing, because that's what we do here today, apparently. We, we use really expensive lights and garbage. <laughs> yeah, and garbage, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's really what we do. <laughs> well, you have to start with the cleanest, best light, and then you can garbage it up after. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the green reflector. This, that's how you would do that. It's silver, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's very reflective. If you were using a green piece of uh, construction paper, it would do the same thing. It would just be more subtle, right? Because this is silvery, just like using a silver reflector. It's all, it's all kind of the same. Oh, yeah. Like, you have Seth has construction paper in here for when we have kids over. Or is it for your drawing? I like pink for, for the ladies. I'm not using this, by the way, for people who think I might be using it. Is that in close enough? I'm not sure if that was enough. Oh, yeah. Yes, that was going to do everything. Yeah, well, it was doubtful, but it was a... Uh, yeah, this is this Seth's Phil Light demo, except Publicist. 
It's all right. Anything that like bounces off is going to take. Now, what, what do we learn from this besides how to do a gimmick where people will be like, oh my god, like how do you use this, right? Let's say you're in an environment and the walls are painted a certain color. It might be an extreme color like red or pink. You know, it's easy to show. It could also just be they're like tan or warm, and you want to bring a warmth to the shot, right? If you bounce the light off that, it will become that color, right? It'll warm it up, and the wall itself will become the light source, which is going to be bigger than, let's say, a small flash. So you can go into an environment that has a wall, and you can bounce the light off of it, and you'll get that. Same is true when you bounce stuff off ceilings. So keep that in mind, you know, and use it to your advantage, and don't don't get surprised by it when it happens, right? Other questions online? Any questions here? All right. Let's do something else, I guess. We got we got a couple minutes. All right, let's do something. It's that time. We need two flashes. You know there's a magnet, right? Oh, I thought the magnet was on the flash. Okay. All right, so we're going to use two lights. We did on access fill, right? And that's cool because you've got a speed light. You're like, I can do on access fill. But if you really want to you know, look cool and charge for it and more, you've got to use a big light for on access fill. So we can take this light, which is ugh, on access, right? And we can create. Now, for this case, because I don't want to keep the I don't want the light to, to be so narrow, necessarily. I'm just going to let it fall behind here to the background. And also because grids tend to add a bit of contrast. So for this, because it's the fill light, I want it to be big and open. I'm going to lose the grid. Yeah. Now, once you've broken the grid out and used it, you can always charge for it. Like You don't have to use it for every single shot. Hold that for me. Like, yeah, man, we have to use the grid for that. It's extra. I mean, they wanted a black background. Well, what you can say is, listen, I could have charged you for a roll of black roll of paper, and that would have taken you know three hours extra to shoot. But all right, I'll try not to leave this here this time. Okay, so remember this shot here with my little Shamira. Oh, my little Shamira. We love this little box. But we want to maybe fill in. Actually, let's do it. Um, let's make it more dramatic. We'll put it off to the side like this. A little drama for your mama. It's convenient that C-Stands have this little step on there. Are you leaving in the middle of the demo, sir? All right, it's fine. It's his usual bathroom break. Yeah, this is the time. This is when he, he always leaves. He's that guy during the end of the movie where like the, all the stuff's happening. He walks up. Then he shows up. He's like, what happened? All right. This is your climax? This is my climax. This is the climax. We're about to do a, a, a moody kind of. No? All right, whatever. I'm just standing here. You're yeah, 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 okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to turn off the A group. I'm going to turn on the B group because that's my other flash. I'm going to go back to TTL for a second because I've lost the meter again. And I'm going to get a base shot. So you're going to be like this. Like, OK, so she's, she's looking off. She's like, da 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 Boom, right? So we got some drama. Ooh, so clean. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do anything else. That's kind of nice by itself. That is nice. But let's say that we want a little fill, right? <laughs> we want options. So All the freckles. we want to fill that shadow in. We want it to be nice and even. I'm going to turn on that light. That is the A group. Right? This is currently, I'm going to turn off C. I'm going to show you guys how to work this. So right now, C is at, at uh, I'm sorry, C was at, this is C. I'm going to turn off B, which is uh, this guy, right? Because right now, this guy's at, now you could just do some, well, it's off, all right. So now I'm going to just shoot A in TTL. So what we're aiming for here is not that, right? That's completely flat, right? We want this to be our shadow. So now that we're there, we can be like, oh, that kind of looks like a ring flash, but not as junky. But we don't want that. All right, so we're going to go into A, and I'm just going to switch everything back to manual. And what did I say before? We want our shadows to be about three stops dark. So I'm going to go to the A group. I'm going to turn it down three stops. I'm going to turn it down 3.1. Oh, you're. That's right. That's right. Daniel 3.1. 
little extra. Yeah. We'll take a shot to show you guys the shadow. Okay, that's our shadow. Pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll leave it there to start with. Then I'm gonna turn C back on. Nope, not C. I'm gonna turn B back on. All right, here we go. That's this light. Now I suspect this is gonna be a little bit too flat, but we're gonna work from here. Perfect. Okay, what happened? Did we lose a tether again? I should probably stop stepping on this cord. Might be. Yeah, I usually wrap that, actually. I didn't do it this time, so it doesn't have pressure. USB-C, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, USB-C. Okay. Good. Okay, right? Now we're filled in a bit. Actually, that's nearly perfect, just like Mary Poppins. Or is she 100% perfect? Okay. Mary Poppins. Part of it looks like a single light source. Oh. Oh my God, it does, right? So now we're filled in. So now I can control that shadow, right? So I can go into A and I can be like, you know what? I want that shadow to be a little bit brighter. I'm going to go up a stop. Now my shadow comes up, right? Now it's like, right? This is a pretty good work headshot. Why do you cut off your head? You Hold on, though. Head? Do we have another flash? Damn it. Um, no, but we have that constant light. Why we do it? We're going to tease the advanced class by doing a constant light as a hair. No, I was going to do a hair light. We're teasing next week. I'm all about the teaser now. All right. I just put the cable away. Well, if I had a remote, I could. Yeah, this is why you need more flashes. OK. This looks good, right? Most of you at this point would be like, yeah, give me my money. I'm good. But not me, because I want you to come back next week. I'm going to add a little bit of a little kiss of light as a hair light. What, do we have a remote? I have to go off this play, so you tell me. No, no, we'll use the hot light. Do you guys want to see me do it with another flash or with a constant light? Raise your hands if you want a constant light. No saying, but who said both? Leave. <laughs> All right. Constant light, it is. Is this an original Justin clamp? This is an original Justin clamp. I'd use a lumen cube, but I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> I could. No, we don't need 60 speed lights, no, just no, no, 21. I see all these demos all over the place. You need like 40 lights just to light the hair. All right. We're going to bring the light in. We're going to bring our hair up, give it some separation. I mean, we could also like the background. There's a lot of things we could do. But I think lighting the hair is nice. It's always great. Yeah. You have this like beautiful, straw, what do you call it, straw colored? It's a little bit lighter than straw. Yeah. Yeah. Straw. It's like a straw colored hair. <laughs> like a paper straw. Like a little. Paper straw. It's going to paper my we'll straw. Flag it a little bit. Yeah, well, really. Oosh. Uh, this is at 10. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. We'll come this way to your spot, first of all. Okay, and you're gonna to have to work this way slightly. Now, what we wanna watch for is because we're using this light, we need to make sure that none of it's gonna hit her in the front of the face. That's gonna look bad, right? We want it to only really hit her in the hair. So normally I would use some kind of modifier, but of course I have nothing, but I think I could probably do this. No, I don't, well, I don't want to, you know, you know why, okay. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. It's hitting you a little bit, but we can live with it. It's got a terrible spread. All right, here we go. Yeah, there I know. <clears throat> How's that? Yeah. Yeah. I can live with it. So what's happening is light is coming in. It's bouncing, hitting her, right? But I think it should not be so much to affect the shot. So we'll find out in a second. 
Number one, let's figure out our exposure for this. We could use a light meter for that because, you know, that's what we like to do. I'm going to take my light meter. I'm going to set it at my, at my current settings. Uh, and I'm going to, in ambient mode, I'm going to point towards the light. Now, I'm going to, what am I going to do? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring the shutter speed down until I get the exposure I want, which is about f8, right? So half a second is five, six and a half. So I'm going to try half a second. I don't know what you're saying. You're saying, Daniel, that's, that's a long time. Yeah, it is. Kill the flash for a second. One half a second. Oh, actually, my exposure is 4.5. It's not f8. For some reason, I was shooting at 4.5. I don't know why. You guys let me do that. All right, so one set. Oh, that was four. No, that was, OK, no. OK. You're asking if you're worried about lens flare. I am not worried about lens flare. I never worry about lens flare. This is a Nikon. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shoot at f4.5, because that's where I was set at. So I was being crazy. And I am going to go down to, we'll say, a quarter of a second. And I'm going to just shoot the hair light and see what it looks like. I think it's going to be a little hotter than I want. Yep, it is. Wow, it's really bouncing back. This is a terrible hair light. We're getting too much bounce back. Um, it's also bouncing off of this. I mean, is it? Yeah, this is actually, all right. Let's do this, guys. We're going to change this up. When doing a live demo, it's always important to be flexible. Yeah, the area would be better, but since we don't have the area, no, it's fine. Go into your spot. I'm going to. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I need you again, sir. You knew this was going to happen, guys. We're not going to get a black background. I know that already because it's going to go bouncing everywhere. This is way too much, ooh, right? I need to soften it out. So what we're going to do is, how do we make the light softer? Make it bigger, right? I'm going to try to do this without killing myself, but that could be hard. And without blinding you guys because I'm just too nice. All right. We're going to take this light, like this. You know what you're going to do with it? Exactly. Let's use the silver, though. Yeah. There you go. Give her a nice hair. Don't hit the background. There you go. Come closer to this. Turn your face this way. Boom. All right, here we go. One quarter of a second at 4.5. Actually, I'm going to dial back. I'm going to go one quarter of a second at f8. Just want to see what that does. OK. That's probably going to work for us a little bit. Now I'm going to bring my flashes back up. I'm going to turn this up. One. Yep. I am also. So we're doing quick adjustments here. I went to F8 because I want to eliminate. We were shooting at 4.5 before, but because we're mixing it with the ambient light, I need to go a little darker because I don't want this fluorescent light affecting my shot either. No, you can leave it on. So what we're doing now is we're just bouncing this thing in to give us a bit of a hair light. All right. And then I brought the flashes back up. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Right. Now we've got... A beautiful kind of hair light. I feel like this. Okay, so what's happening? You're good. You are. You are perfect. Yes. Bring your hair a little Some bit on that side. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. That's too much. That is beautiful. Good, good, good. Getting good composition with your head cut off. Nice. Here we go. All right. All right. We got a beautiful hair light coming in. What we're not going to get now, though, is as much shadow on her cheek, right, as we had before. Why is that? 
because this light is bouncing around too much. Because remember I talked about before, when you're bouncing light, you don't have the control. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm going to ask for now? I want to use a flash. I know you asked me and I said no. Oh my God. Who has a pro photo remote? <laughs> Nobody? Maybe, I don't know, people carry them around. Okay, so I want a tighter shot. That was fine, you did a good job. I'm not gonna blame you, I kind of blame him a little bit, right? Uh, uh, or any, no, just a regular remote. So we, yeah, if we had that loom cube, we'd be good to go. So this is just not working, right? Not the right tool for what we want to do. I could make it work. Nobody wants to see me take everything down and put it all back up, so we're not gonna do that. Instead, because we're gonna use what's available to us because we're in Adoramas, I'm just gonna get a remote. So what we're gonna do here is use the A1 that's on top of my camera as the hair light. Flash is gonna give us way more control, right? Which we've been talking about this whole time, and this is now gonna give us the proof. The proof is in the pudding. Hold that for me. I'm gonna take this off the stand. This is a wonderful light, but it's not what we want. Okay, here we go. Justin Clamp. I'm on channel seven. All right, let me turn this around. Hey. Okay, good. So now, let's start over. All right, we've got our remote, right? We're going to fire our lights. This is the other way to do it, right? We're going to take the remote, put it on top of the camera, the camera over my shoulder. Now, I'm going to take this light, which is in group C. And I'm going to turn it on. OK, so just so that we're clear about what happened there. Because of the space that we're in, right, this light that we tried to use, the reflector just couldn't give us the control we needed to get the light where we wanted it, right? If you had to use that, there's a lot of ways you could have worked it and just compromised the shot. But I didn't have to do that because I had this available to me, so that's what I'm doing. Sometimes if you're working something and it just isn't working out, just do something different. I mean, you don't, don't feel like you have to be uh, stuck to one thing unless you're following a layout, which I did a different workshop about. So, A1 in channel C, or group C. Come to your spot, please. What I'm gonna do here, So I'm going to start by building this thing back out again. So we're going to forget about that whole shutter speed thing. We'll definitely do that in the advanced class, I promise. We'll use the, uh, some different hot lights. Do, you do I prefer Capture One over everything else? 150,000%. Okay. Okay. Let's get a test to see where we're at. Come closer to the light. Good. Just give me a second to get in place, guys. So we are at 200th of a second, F8. There we go. Now we have that nice shadow on our cheek again, right? That mood. But what we don't have is the hair light. So now we're going to bring the hair light in using this A1. This guy is at 6.7. I'm going to come in here. It's at, it's at 4, which is like almost three stops less. That's probably going to be good because I don't have any modifier on this, right? So we're in manual. We're just going to take a shot and see what it looks like. And we'll adjust our exposure as we go. All right, so we need more. Turn this modeling light on so you guys can see what it's doing. Okay, go ahead and turn, turn the light. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, right? There we go. I'm going to turn this up. Actually, I'll match them for now. Let's start at the same spot. 
There we go. Way too much, right? So split the difference, right? That was three and a half stops. So I'll go down. Plus stop and a half. What we want here is I want a little bit of a drama because, you know, Allison's kind of a dramatic person. But that's not terrible. Still a bit much, though, right? Yeah, I think so. So, not only is it a little bit more light than I want, it's also the quality of light is a little bit kind of like, Daniel just shoved a hair light in there and ugh, you know? I have this beautiful light wrapping around it and then I have this blast of hair light that's just not very beautiful. But over here I have my bonnet and it's not even Easter. Right? This is gonna make the light bigger, which is gonna make it softer, but it's also gonna diffuse it a bit, which is gonna be nice on hair because remember that hair uh, has oils in it, right? So when light hits hair, it reflects, and that's actually why hair sticks out, right? So using a more diffuse light for the hair light will help. I did not adjust the power. Okay, I'm gonna have to bring it up clearly. Well, yeah, you lose, yeah, lose at least a stop. Uh, I'll turn it up one stop to see. Come in here, you're there. Good, good, good. Might actually swing it out a bit. That's not terrible. I think it's got to come. I'm gonna, yeah, exactly. You want to get it? It's got to come out a bit so we can see the wrap. I'm also gonna turn this one down a little bit. Now I'm finessing, right? Actually, let me do one thing at a time. I don't want to confuse. Okay. Ooh. Right. Just subtle, subtle hair light. I want two more tenths here. And in, the, in here, I want to turn it down three tenths, right? Once you're at this point, it's all about dialing it in. And the more you're standing there in front of your client telling your assistants to turn things up and down one and two tenths, the more kind of cool you look. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Hey, listen. Right? There we go. The whole thing looks a smidge dark. For that, it's, it, no, it shouldn't be on TTL because I'm not using TTL remote. The whole thing looks a smidge dark. I think, actually, I think it's the key light looks a little dark. So I'm going to bring this one up. As you're adjusting, because remember, I, I adjusted my fill darker, right? So now the whole exposure went down a little bit. So I'm going to turn my key light up. What I'm doing now is I'm creating contrast. Good. Now we got the contrast, right? That's key. I would love this to be a little lower. It sounds a little, like it's lower than yellow. So if you want to rip it. Yeah, we're going to have to go on a smaller stand. No, I could just do this. Oh, you could do that, yeah. Nope. Sorry, it's a troll photo. Sorry. They, they, they need better magnets. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll get it to me anyway. It doesn't matter. It's because you're supposed to put this on second. They yell at me every time. The troll photo goes on my stream. They yell at me every time. Well, listen. When the, the, if they wanna, if they wanna give it to me, then they can tell me how to put it on. Sir, there we go. That's it. Now I feel like there's just a little bit too much forehead there, so I'm gonna go a little tighter. Yes, make sure you keep cutting off his skull. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually even more forward. I need the mystery of what the top of her head looks like. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> All right, so let's get the top of her head. The eyebrows. Let's go right at the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can do this. They said that's on the Paul Mona Lisa, right? That she has the top of her head. Yeah, exactly. Like if she didn't have the top of her head, like that's so much better with the top of your head. Oh my God, it's like a way better shot, right? Oh my God, that's way better than that for sure. Oh God. Oh. Okay, so you see here, right? A YouTube chat room can't be wrong. You have to learn. Hair light, subtle, right? It gives the now. Actually, if I wanted to get really crazy, you haven't got a warming gel, do you? Oh uh, yeah. I would love to throw a little bit of warmth on her hair. You don't want a full, right? No, just a little bit of warmth. A smidge, actually a, 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 a bastard, a half bastard amber. A whisper of warmth. <laughs> God, I hate you so much. All right. All right. I mean, amber is what I would prefer, but if you have a CTO, it's fine. I got yellow yellows. No, you don't have. This is like a. a that's a that's a half, a quarter. That's like a quarter. All right, I'll try it. All right, I need you one more time, sir. Just hold this like there. This is not the way to do this, but ah, oh, you electric shocked me. 
Jeez. Well, flying, right? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> All right, good. Right? <laughs> Perfect. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Step back a little bit. Right, so we got a little warmth, right? A little warmth to the hair. It's nice. I feel like it's still a little too low, but it's good. When she looks towards the light, you have more yeah, contrast. Yeah, yeah. So you really need to, to hear it come a little closer. Good. So what's happening is it, it's all kind of... Uh, the exposure is staying the same, but it kind of tricks your eye. The more she looks towards the light, the more the reflective parts of her face, the top of her cheekbones or forehead catches the light, which then adds contrast, which then makes it look brighter, right? So if that's the shot, you're fine. If you're going to have her start working more towards the camera, then we need to either increase our exposure or something. Work that same exact thing, but I'm going to turn this one down another five tenths. Five tenths? Please. Half a stop. Yeah, five Please turn that down five tenths. Good, good, good. Yeah, a little bit more dark, right? Beautiful. I love it. It's like the girl with the pearl earrings. You know it would be good. Yeah. You know what? If we really wanted to, we could be like this too. Do reflector. You want to do a reflector? Just right here, like a little smidge. You can't do both? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> Just to see what it looks like. Probably going to ruin it. Don't get her whole head. No, I definitely won't get her whole head. Do it. Good. There you go. Right. So now we filled in. Right? Just under her nose and stuff. It, it, it more or less kept the, the, the... Yeah, yeah. So it more or less kept the cheek the same, right? But we filled it under her nose, right? Because it, it, sometimes you got to, you know, use different stuff. That's one. i got to get in the light. Yeah, in that light, yeah. I think you might be getting too much of the front light, but we'll see. Oh, the yellow? The, the hair light? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, Find out in a second. Because like, the silver is like... Oh, no, no, that's good. And there you go. That's silver, right? Little silver punch, a little drama for your mama. A little warmth on here, right? That's all subtle things. We could have been fine just throwing one light up, and it looked fine. At the beginning, you guys were like, oh, that looks so good. This is it, right? This is crafting the shot. This gives us control. This is not the light that's in the space. This is the light that we created, and that's what Flash gives you, the power to do that. So uh, you can also do it with hot lights, but you, you need to have more control of the space, right? We'll do a hot, I should definitely do a hot light demo at some point. But, but I got to say that, and I'll say, like I said at the beginning, if you are going to primarily be a stills photographer, you might start off, thank you, you might start off using uh, constant lights because it might be easier or natural light or whatever, but ultimately you want to learn flash because flash gives you the ability to craft the light exactly how you want it. And that's really what we want to do as photographers. We want to have that, that ability to control our light. And that's what flash gives you. Questions before we break? Yes. Yep. Is that I'm sorry? What is that on okay, so on access means that you're on, on the axis of the lens. So basically, so when you have a fill light, right, you might have like, if I'm using this light here, you know, right, it's lighting me, right, if I put a reflector over here, that's not on the axis, that's opposite the light, on the axis of the lens would be here, okay. which clearly you can't bounce this light to do that, you'd have to. So on access fill is nice because whenever you're adding light, it's always going to throw another shadow. You know, we, even if you don't notice it. So by putting the shadow directly behind the subject, you don't get cross shadows. Because the worst thing is when somebody has like a nose shadow here and here, like it just looks weird, right? Because the thing about lighting is, like you can look at this and be like, yeah, this is clearly a lit portrait. But nobody looks at this and goes, oh, lighting, right? Because it's just a portrait, it feels right. If you start having light that screams at you, that's when people start really pulling it apart. So on access fill, which is basically what this is, Nice and simple, brings in her cheek, doesn't add, uh, you know, any kind of cross shadows. Other questions? For what? For a full shot. Okay, so if you're going to do a full length, so this is a good question, and I'll answer it like this. So the answer, there, the question is, do you need a bigger softbox to do a full length shot? No. But. If you use a smaller light source, what are you going to have to do to get it full length? Back it up, right? And then what's that going to do? It's going to make it hard. So if you want soft light, yes, right? Because you want to keep your light close. Like this light is soft when it's like this, you know? But it's not soft from back here, 
right? It really depends. So in order to make the light, where this light is soft even from back here, because it's big. And that's really what it is. So once you understand how light works, you can then manipulate it to do the things you want it to do. So yeah, if you want to use a, a full length shot, I usually recommend, I mean, this is how I normally would uh, think about lighting. You always want to get your light as close as possible, you know, in, in the typical kind of clean portraity kind of feel. Which means that if I'm using a small, this light source and I want to light in full length, can I do it from here? Which is close, right? No, so I do need a bigger light. But can I do it? Yeah, you know, so that, that's that. But a good question. Other questions? No, all right, you know everything. Or all the basics anyways, right? All right, cool, next week we're doing advanced flash. So this is when we get into the territory of weird stuff and Seth will harass me about not being able to know how to do it right. Um, we're gonna do multiple exposures, we're gonna do pop and blur, so we're gonna combine lights together. We're gonna talk more about gels and color temperature and we're gonna do all kinds of weird stuff um, and show you guys some techniques to play with. Will you do anything else? Okay, we're planning something for December, so keep on the go for that. We had to change the date, so sorry, that was my we fault. Pick, we didn't pick a date. No, early early December we're going to do something together. So DM, so follow. I'm Daniel Norton. Seth is the last ex witness. If you guys don't know, DM us and stuff you want us to see to do together because we're going to do some uh, something. We're not listen to any of it yeah, anymore. we won't listen to it, but we want to at least laugh at what you what you suggest. <laughs> uh, so Allison is, what's your uh, call sign? My uh, your call sign. My is, you mean my handle? Your handle. He thought you were a woman in a call center oh putting wires together to make I'm a Allie, call. I'm Allie, A-L-L-I, Blackman, spelled Blackman. Allie, Allie, Allie Blackman. So. Did you say Iceman? You Iceman. <laughs> she's, 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 she's the gooch or whatever. <laughs> it's a maverick. <laughs> right. So, and I'm Daniel Norton, so follow me. Uh, we'll see you next week, I guess. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Let's go.